Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it's your boy BD, the host of the Horror Tavern. And today I'm here to talk about a horror movie that I think deserves a lot of respect and probably more attention and respect within the horror community than it's given. Uh, this is a gothic horror movie, a modern one that came out in uh, 2022. It released on February 2022 in the United States. And I had seen some things about this movie um, like years back. I saw Found Flicks make a video on it um, and I watched it years ago. Um, and then I decided, well, might as well uh, revisit you know, this sort of movie and see what it's about because I never saw it. I only saw that YouTube channel covering it. So now I actually wanted to watch the movie for myself. And after watching it, I got to say that this is an amazing horror movie. I mean, I love the creature feature stuff you get in this movie. I love how unconventional it is. I love some of the horrific and scary imagery you get in here involving how people get killed, some things they transform into, some vicious attack scenes throughout the movie, and just psychological and mental just fuckery horror that happens throughout the length of this film. Um, so that movie is The Cursed 2022, directed and produced, I believe, by Sean Ellis. Now this movie, I believe, was made in 2021, but it released in the United States 2022. And the plot is essentially about um, opening up in the middle of a war. It's during the 19th century, I believe, in France. Um, you got soldiers fighting out um, in the front line of the trenches. Obviously, they're shooting at each other. There's a lot of death and injuries going on. And one perspective you get is of a soldier who gets shot four times, I believe, in his, you know, chest and whatever. And as he gets sent to the tent where they're basically um, having the medical team work on him, they pull out three bullets from him and then they pull out a fourth bullet. But the fourth bullet is extremely strange. It's like in conical shape. It's made completely out of silver and they're not sure why you know the Germans would be using these type of or I don't know if it's the Germans getting shot at or if it's uh, the French getting shot at but they're not sure why um, people would be using you know silver bullets in the middle of the war. It makes no sense. But then you cut to rural France again in the 19th century and you see this uh, basically this very rich family living in this old manor and they are basically having their estate on top of this I guess sacred Romanian village ground. There's a Romanian um, village of gypsies that's out there by like this large grass field um, and I think the dad of this rich manor family doesn't want them appeating upon his property so he decides to gather together like a group of people from the town ride on horses and bring over torches to this Romanian village of gypsies and they start mass slaughtering them. They start killing every single one of these Romanian villagers. They get accused of witchcraft. They get accused of all these crazy things. Uh, their tents and their houses basically start getting burnt down by the torches. People start getting shot up and killed. And one of the guys who I think is the leader of this Romanian village ends up taking uh, this, I guess, pair of dentures belonging to what seems like some type of animal like a wolf or something and it's covered in these silver I guess teeth and canines and fangs that you saw early on that they were melting down silver um, and making them into this set of dentures um, and I think they used that to make bullets as well so he ends up burying this under the ground in the dirt and what ends up happening is he ends up getting basically crucified he ends up getting nails um, drawn through his his legs, his feet, his hands, and he ends up getting strung up on this cross. They put a sack over his head and basically let him bleed out and die like some sort of morbid scarecrow. Uh, meanwhile, another woman, uh, the woman who basically decided to curse these guys and is accused of witchcraft, ends up being buried fucking alive. So this is a very brutal massacre to this village. And as the people from the town basically leave, they have no sort of sympathy. They just feel like you know, they, they deserve to get rid of this group of gypsies and now that their property and town is all protected, they head back. And after this, the kids of these parents and the kids of the town start getting haunted by nightmares. 
all the kids in this town and the daughter and son of this you know rich family start getting these nightmares of them venturing out into that same field where the gypsies got killed and they'll walk up to the guy who's crucified as a scarecrow and his dead body will start moving and they assume that this scarecrow is going to come down and start abducting them uh they have dream sequences of the lady who got buried alive basically digging her way out and haunting them so they think that there might be some paranormal activity some ghosts some morbid next level witchcraft things going on now and all the kids are being plagued by these visions and eventually as there's kids playing out in the town and you got the son and the older sister there um one of the kids basically brings this to all the other kids attention saying like hey you guys told us about this dream you've been having i've been having the same dream so i think that we're all getting haunted by these thoughts and they decide to go and head out to this uh, grassy field where the gypsies got killed um, reluctantly. And as they go out there, the kid who proposed the idea of all of them having shared dreams decides to dig up um, the, the grave site of where the woman was buried in front of this rotting scarecrow. And he pulls out the pair of uh, canine dentures with silver teeth. And um, I guess influenced by some type of force, he decides to put the dentures inside of his mouth and he gets taken over and then he bites the neck of the son of the rich family. So the son and daughter of the rich family is there. The son ends up getting bit in his neck and attacked by this kid. And after that happens, all the kids basically, you know, meet up in church after the main girl and the guy who attacked her brother. And they basically say in the confession booth that we cannot talk about what happened if we do my family and i are going to get kicked out we might get killed so the daughter reluctantly agrees okay we'll keep it a secret or we'll pretend nobody saw what happened we weren't even supposed to be out there so we'll avoid getting in trouble and it all seems to be okay because the brother survives the attack but then her brother starts acting differently he starts acting like he's extremely sick extremely ill starts becoming more feral and animalistic and then eventually one day he runs away. And as he runs away, the village basically starts getting haunted by these creatures, these animals who start attacking the kids, attacking people, and what seemingly seems to be multiplying and creating a pack of them. Um, and as you can suspect, with the silver teeth and all that stuff, this is a werewolf horror story, but it's not your typical werewolf horror story it's very unconventional in a certain regard in the way that the werewolves look in the way that they spread around and some of the body horror and things that happen and as all this stuff starts plaguing and people start ending up dying and becoming sick they bring in this famous pathologist a guy who studies you know injuries and disease and his name is john mcbride and i believe he's played by a guy named boyd holbrook i think that's his name um he was in the predator 2018 which i've not seen but boyd holbrook playing john mcbride he does a fantastic job i mean i fell in love with him i think he's a great main character he's a sympathetic hero you find out that his backstory is plagued potentially by some of the things happening in this story um, history may have repeated itself and now he's coming to investigate what exactly happened to him in the past he ended up losing his wife and children potentially to some of these creatures and curses and witchcraft so it all comes back full circle and as he, you know, arrives to this town and he tries figuring out what's happening, he ends up getting interlocked with the horror of these creatures, these monsters, these curses. And he has to find out a way to save the day to prevent what happened to his village and his family from happening to these people to the best of his ability, even among the despair and tragedies that are happening. So... Again, that's basically the plot of the movie. It's a gothic horror movie dealing with the town who's plagued by a curse and monsters, specifically werewolves. So what are some of the things that I love about this movie and why do I regard it so highly? This is a very scary movie first and foremost. Um, there is a lot of scary ass, disturbing ass shit in this movie involving the werewolves and how they transform and some of the curses stuff. Um, as I explained, and you might see it in the thumbnail of this video, the werewolves are unconventional. They don't look like werewolves at all. They are more looking like if you've ever seen the creepypasta of the rake or pale skin crawlers, they look like those 
pale skin crawler, skinwalker looking type of creatures. These ones look more like hairless chimpanzees, demonic hairless chimpanzees, or basically like demons. These are demonic, hairless, muscular looking creatures. They look nothing like werewolves, which was an odd choice, but that's what they decided to do for the movie. Um, but I think that they're very effective. They are scary monsters. Um, they attack viciously. They are extremely powerful. You have this amazing um, climax scene at the end of the movie involving a church full of people and one of these monsters attacking and slaughtering people. It is extremely strong. It's got the power of a lion. It's just horrific to see attack people. You got a scene in the movie where the main characters are locked inside of the house trying to hide from these things, walking around and trying to get them. You got chase sequences, you got shootouts. Um, you got a lot of scary stuff involving these werewolves, uh, these pale skinned muscular werewolves. Um, and yeah, they're just really good creature feature um, material, really good creature feature action. They pose a threat level and the CGI on these uh, werewolves actually looks really good. The CGI on the monsters is pretty damn good and you do get some scary practical effects. Um, you even have a second aspect to this curse, which is outside of just, um, well, not outside, but there's a second aspect to the curse where basically when a person is bitten by these cursed silver teeth, and this disease starts to spread amongst you to turn you into these monsters, at first, you don't turn into the monster directly, no. When you're bitten by these cursed uh, silver canines, you end up getting infected by these sentient branches and wood that starts growing out from your body, basically like a cocoon. Um, you have people who basically start having these sentient branches and vines start wrapping around their body and strangling and trying to kill them. You got a scary ass scene of a girl who's basically been infected and she walks out to the middle of this like lake or pond and these branches start like wrapping around her and they start constricting and choking her out like a fucking anaconda. And then they, not only do they constrict and strangle her, but then more branches come out from under her feet wrap themselves around her arms and then pull her under the water so she also gets drowned on top of that and again these branches start wrapping around her they cocoon around her body and then potentially she may turn into one of these pale skin crawler demons that start walking around and attacking people and you kill them using silver bullets and when she gets killed uh john mcbride actually ends up taking her body back to the group of town elders and they put her on top of this autopsy board and he starts cutting open this pale skin werewolf demon thing and it's practical effects. It's all a practical, like, I guess, not animatronic, but a practical makeup monster put on top of a board. And as he dissects it, its guts spill out, its stomach opens up, people are like grossed out and shit. And then you see as it's ripped open that its stomach sac has something moving inside of it. And John McBride knows what it is. The other elders are sort of hesitant. They have an idea what it might be. And when he cuts open this sack and lets it rip open, you see that naked, wet, traumatized girl start basically flinching and seizuring out of the sack. And she's got those alive branches crawling out like snakes and still wrapped around her body. And ultimately her father has to be responsible for shooting her in the head with the silver bullet and killing her. And that's what finishes the job. It's what stops the monster. So basically these branches will wrap around your body, make a cocoon, and then the pale skin demon basically body will start forming around you and you'll be trapped inside of its stomach sack, inside of its liquid. That is so fucking scary. That is so fucking horrific. And the imagery of it is so damn good. Um, I like the tension within the story. I like the characters. I like seeing how the characters are traumatized by the scary dreams of the scarecrow, of the, the buried alive lady, of the Romanian village, of the monsters. You see them truly suffer. You see them truly go through stuff. Even John McBride, who's an outsider, who's coming in and trying to save the day, he's plagued by it. He has a vision where he goes out to the grass field and the scarecrow is missing and he sees this tall scarecrow wrapping its arms around the ghostly bodies of his dead wife and dead daughter, who again had nothing to do with this village or maybe they did you don't know you have to figure it out um and you see that he's also suffering and he's slowly breaking down he has to be strong 
for all the other people who are losing their minds. So it's a very tragic film. It's got a lot of depressing stuff in it, but it's entertaining. You got a lot of scary shit in there. You got a lot of horrific body horror, good creature feature action, and you got some good themes in there involving you know, people trying to protect their families, the idea of, you know, foreigners encroaching upon native lands, messing with them, and then getting um, some things thrown back at them, the idea of, you know, grounding yourself in realism versus believing in the supernatural. You got all those nice things in there. And overall, it makes for a really damn good to amazing, in my opinion, an amazing gothic horror movie. Um, the only complaint I have about it is it's quite long. It's like, almost two hours long and you can feel it at certain points it's a little bit slow which is why i didn't give this movie a perfect score but regardless i got close to that i would give um the curse 2022 a 9.8 out of 10 a nearly perfect horror movie score this is 100 percent in the hall of fame of horror movies to me and it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time one of my new favorite werewolf stories of all time despite how unconventional it is in werewolf horror media so that's all i got for today hope you guys enjoyed i 100 percent recommend you guys go check it out so please go watch it if you've seen it or if you plan to watch it let me know down below what are your thoughts do you agree with me do you disagree with me how much do you love it do you not like it did you find it boring let me all know that down below and if you like this video please consider hitting the subscribe button and the like button i would very much appreciate it helps out my channel tremendously and helps build up our community and stay tuned for more content to come deuces the cursed Ooh, i know some people are gonna like hate on this movie because they don't look like werewolves i get it but if you take it for what it is man this is fucking effective but yeah i'm not gonna lie to you if, if those if, <laughs> i can get the criticism if those are supposed to be werewolves i must be motherfucking sean mendez in this bitch because ain't no damn way boy and i missed